up guys, Nerd Scum here, and it is September 13th, and you know what that means? Venomverse number two. I know that we're all really excited to see what goes on in this book, see what Colin Bunn and the gentleman whose name last time gave me a very mediocre joke for the last review have in store for us. So let's go ahead without any further ado and jump right in. So we jump in right where we left off previously with Venom fighting Spider-Man bone baby symbiote anti-venom looking dude and it's pretty brutal and spidey bone baby is just like you couldn't beat spider-man on your best day what chance do you think you have against me at which point his little bone baby buddies show up and he puts his fist through eddie and it is just brutal to the point where finally he just picks him up by the throat and offers him up to the bone babies at which point, all of a sudden, ba 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 Freaking Deadpool, Mary Jane, and old man Logan Venom show up. And he's like, oh, you brought friends. <laughs> then we come over here and we see that Captain Venom has been taken captive and is being tortured to more or less degrees. And he looks up and then comes in the ghostly image of Sharon Carter. And she begins to comfort him and tell him that he never gave up on her. She's not going to give up on him. And she moves in for a kiss. At which point we cut back to the fight, and it is still just brutal. I mean, these guys are basically holding their own, but they are still just getting taken out one by one by one by one. And then finally over here, after a, it actually looks like our heroes might get the upper hand, he's just kind of like, you know what, without my bone baby buddies here to infect you, it's just, it's kind of boring. So I'm going to peace out and see you guys later. So then we go back to Cap, Venom, and Sharon Carter, and he realizes it's a ruse. She's one of the bone babies projecting, and she's like, you fool, I was just trying to make this easy on you. And then, boom, like the frickin' bone baby little claw things reach around his head and into his bloody eye. So then we go over here, and we see that the symbiote folk have reconvened, and we get through a little bit more exposition about how the poisons work, and then they're like, basically, you know, They've got Cap Venom, man. Like, he knows where all of our stuff is. We gotta get out of here. Uh, to which, old man Logan Venom is just like, no, 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 no. We split them up. I picked out half the safe houses. He picked out half the safe houses, just in case. And then, to that, uh, Deadpool Venom is like, you wanna lead us to the slaughter? Be my guest. But face it, old man Venom. You can bark orders all you want, but it doesn't make you Captain America. And then we get the big reveal of Cap Venom having been turned into the bone baby Captain America symbiote dude. And he's here along with Hawkeye and the Scarlet Witch. And I think that guy is supposed to be uh, Sabretooth. And I have no idea who you are, shadowy figure, but you look ominous as hell. And basically he's just like, I know everything. I know all their plans. I can help you defeat them. And his master says, excellent. And then we get the reveal finally that the person behind all of this, or the main host, is Doctor Doom, because of course he is. So at this point, the Venom folk are fleeing towards their new safe house, and when they get there, Eddie recognizes it as the church where he and his symbiote were initially bonded. Uh, they move in, and it's revealed that Rocket has been working on a doomsday weapon that would pretty much annihilate the poisons altogether. And Eddie's like, Doomsday, huh? I don't know. I might have an idea about that. But even I don't like how crazy it is. And then she's like, speaking of crazy, where's Deadpool? And we see Deadpool out in the streets here. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody out there? Any poisons out there looking for a tasty snack? Anybody buying what I'm selling? Holla at you, boy. And then he's like, and we see the bone baby show up, and he's like, oh, there you are. Don't be shy, step right up. And then we get the final page reveal of Venom in the Streets, surrounded by the new bone baby possessed hosts of uh, Bullseye, Immortal Iron Fist. I believe this is supposed to be Storm. And then up at the top, we got Green Goblin, and they all look dope as hell. And Deadpool's like, you know what they say? If you can't beat them, then surrender peacefully to them. And hopefully the initiation process won't be as painful as I think. Right on, guys. That was Venomverse number two. And it was awesome. And you have no idea 
how good it feels to say that about a Marvel book right now. This book worked for me on every level. The writing is just totally on point. We still don't have a lot in the way of plot, but the pace of it works very well. We're still getting little bits of exposition here and there, as opposed to like one big long exposition dump, totally like slowing down the pace of the book. And while there hasn't been a lot in the way of plot, there's been a lot in the way of character and characterization that has been done very, very, very well. Um, similarly, the art in this book was great. Like all the action sequences, I could tell what was going on. They were well plotted out. They were cool. Um, all the new uh, Bone Baby symbiote characters like are dope, man. Like in the first issue, I had some problems with uh, the Hulk and with the... Uh, Dr. Octopus, they just because they look kind of silly, uh, but they are a little bit more like outlandishly designed characters, I suppose, to begin with. In this one, there's a much more unified look to most of those characters uh, in terms of like the way that they've changed, but they still get to keep a lot more of their original characters' accents, which really, really works, and it is just badass, man. Yeah, like, um, the, also in terms of the writing, the dialogue was much better. I'll be honest with you, I know that there's a couple little problems here and there, but I really think at this point it's just nitpicking. Like, I really love this book, and I'm really excited for the next issue. But I really want to know what you guys think. Did y'all like it as much as me, or did you feel like it was a step down? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like if you liked it, and share it with some friends. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, nerds coming.